Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested, and today I'm joined by Frank from Tested and Sean from Tested. And it is a new week of builds. This whole week we're going to be working on a new project uh, for you guys and for the Tested Premium member community. So here's how it works. This first episode, we're going to introduce the build concept, show you some interesting parts, talk about the, the process of how we're going to do, uh, work on this, and then the rest of the week we're going to try to finish this project on Tested.com for Tested Premium members. Uh, it's a great way to sign up and watch a lot of the stuff that Adam's doing behind the scenes. Um, and also stuff we're doing as well. So today we are going to be uh, assembling and painting um, a new model kit, and this is a 3D printed kit. Yeah. So for those of you out there who watched our videos about 3D printing before, Sean is our uh, 3D printing and fabrication rapid prototyping expert. Uh, we introduced you guys to Jackie Wan's uh, designs. Yeah, Jackie Wan Valcro. Uh, we we just got done running a bunch of different projects that he's done. Um, he's a designer after my own heart because he designs things that are many pieces that go together, which I, I like a lot and is kind of how I design things. So um, one of his newest things that he's released is the Fallout Mini Nuke from the Fat Man, Ooh. one of the most coveted weapons. Uh, so uh, he has done two versions. He has a nice uh, complete version that uh, you can download on Umagine. And he did a really cool cutaway version, which he's been kind enough to share with us. Yeah, so the files for this Fallout Mini Nuke, um, just for the shell, are available online, like you said. Yes. And he partners with Ultimaker, the 3D printing 3D printer company. Mm -hmm. And so and this is a blog post that Jackie did for Ultimaker, talking about the modeling, the printing, and his final paint job for the Mini Nuke. Yeah. Uh, the final product, which we saw at the top, is, is incredible. It, it's, it's great. I'm actually scrolled down to the bottom to show you this is what it looks like when it's assembled but not painted. Uh -huh. And then this is what it looks like yeah, great. when it's finished. He did a nice painted. job. I think, so. I think that's an amazing, amazing job. And he was kind enough to send us the files. So Sean, this whole week, you've been printing out the Mini Nuke. <laughs> yes, it's a, it's a challenging print. It's uh, about 21 hours per Nuke. Wow. Um, and it's, because uh, some of the pieces are pretty big and um, uh, printing at fine resolution. And some of the, a lot of the parts are very thin, so you end up having to run the printer a little bit slower than you would normally. Um, and because they're so thin, you might have to uh, use what's called a brim to keep it kind of glued to the platform a little bit better. Um, and but it's it's a really nice print and it fits together well. Yeah, let's talk about the design of this, um, as Jackie explains in his blog and things that you took away when you look at look at the print and design, Sean. Uh, it's obviously it's like an egg shape. Right? Yeah. And printing an egg is that easy or difficult? Or designing something to be printed as a shape? It's a little difficult because uh, you got the overhangs that you have to deal with, so it can't be too bulgy or it won't be able to print smoothly. Right. So um, this. Arc yeah. here, this curve on the outside, if it was too wide of a curve, then as it's printing out, you're gonna need supports. Yeah, and it's a tall piece, so right. it just has a lot of layers to draw, and we did it to keep the stepping to a minimum, to keep it as smooth, smooth as possible, we did it at 0.1 millimeters, so it, take, it takes a long time. I think just the, I print the shell and the fins together, the bottom half, and that's about a 16 hour print all by itself. So, so. this, yeah. And this get printed together. That's 16 hours. Oh, 16 hours, yeah. Uh, the fins themselves also take a long time and Very, something yes. because of uh, this angle here specifically. It's, it's not the angle so much as how thin the, um, f the fins are. So ah. it has to go really slow when it's drawing the fins because it's such a small cross section that if you go too fast, the uh, plastic won't uh, solidify fast enough and you'll get a messy print. It will peel off. It'll it won't. It'll just get blobby. So mm. I mean, you could clean it up, and um, and we printed a lot of these hollow, which is a tricky business with such big pieces because hollow uh, it helps with the surface detail and it uh, helped them print faster, um, but it also can lead to really fragile parts. So you got to get you know the settings just right. Right. It, what I thought was also interesting is that on this <clears throat> shape, you can see you printed it like this, so mm -hmm. all your lines or horizontal, but even, I don't know if you guys can see, even on the, um, right here. You get a little you get ring ring effect. Yeah. 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 You can see almost like, it's like a topographical map where you get the ring effect that goes all the way around. 
And that can have to do with your what uh, your layer resolution is. It could have. It could also be uh, effect of the model itself. Like if you had a model that uh, it was slightly blocky rather than perfectly smooth, you might get something like that. But it's it's just a slight artifact, and you could sand that out or you know uh, pretty easily. So. All right, uh, let's call out the rest of the pieces. So you have the base here with the fins. Yep. That sits on top. Um, and then you have the you have nuclear core and the, the right yeah he, he did it's 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 a complex oh so you have goodness. to kind of assemble the, the core gets assembled first and and then once the core is assembled that kind of snaps into the shell um, and then there's fins that there's a ring that goes on the fins and it, there's a right. lot of pieces and he did a really really nice job of of making everything fit together okay, um, so this ring goes around the fins. Yeah. That goes on top of here. <laughs> Something like that. Something like that. This is the worst nuclear bomb ever. N um, nuclear or nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear. Yeah. Nuclear. Nuclear. Not nuclear. I am, I, I'm nuclear. famous for mispronouncing <laughs> nuclear. things. Nuclear. So uh, I'll go with you guys. Nuclear. Um, that's, I think that's, and, that's reasonable. Uh, <laughs> Jackie, <laughs> uh, Jackie didn't release the, uh, the cutaway files, but he does have kits that you can get from his uh, shop uh, if you don't have a 3D printer. Right, and, and yeah. that's also a great thing that people do. Not only is he releasing the files for free, but also you can buy you can buy like a kit that looks like this. Yeah, because not everybody's going to have the access to the 3D printer. Awesome. Um, this looks like a really clean print. Is there any cleanup needed? Very minimal. Sometimes, um, particularly with the shell on the ribs inside, um, when you're when you have the the print head moving um, from part to part, as, as particularly little thin ones like this, you might get what's called stringing, where you get a little plastic booger that gets stuck on the side of the part uh, next to it. So there might be some minor cleanup like that. Um, you could sand it if you want. I've been using, uh, you know, we did the the ghost trap recently, and I used I used Bondo glazing and spotting putty. Uh, that I put on the prints and it and it goes on really thin and it dries really fast and it sands really easily and it's pr I found it's pretty good for uh, filling in the lines on the print. We're not going to do that today, but if you wanted to, you, you totally could. Yeah, I think these are this is a really great job. Um, now, what else did you notice about the design of this? I mean, can you print? Is, is everything meant to be just printed vertically? I mean, some of these clearly more worked. or less. Some of the parts are a little challenging. So th I think this is the fission uh, detonator that has a little guy. pellet. Yeah. Yep. Um, because it has such a small base, it can be challenging the print because it has it's tall and it has a wide top and a small base. So it may like to break loose from the print bit. So to clarify, it was printed this way. Yeah. Not this way because it's not a flat. Base. Right, it'd be challenging to print it that way due to the dome top, and even even the dome top printing it that way can be tough. And what Jackie did on a lot of these parts is he prints different pieces at different resolutions. Mm. So that one he he typically printed at a higher resolution to get a nice smooth top. And for time purposes, I, I printed it at the point one, which is kind of the standard for the Ultimaker. So mine mine might need a little sanding or cleanup. Um, but the other thing you can do with that is you can do what's called a, a brim, which it basically uh, makes a little skirt around it that's attached to it that kind of keeps it glued to the print bed. And that's what I ended up doing for, for that piece. So is, is it like a, a ring around that, and that's lightly attached yeah, at certain points? Yeah, it basically is maybe like a one to two layer thick uh, brim that surrounds it. So it's a kind of like a little... Uh, outline of the base and it connects to the base so it just oh, gives it a wider platform okay. to stick to the other way you can do it is a raft which is where it lays down a thick layer of plastic that this is built on top of mm -hmm. but I actually I've been liking the brim a lot and and it uh, doesn't take as long to print or as much plastic so and then mm -hmm. you kind of just peel it off or trim it off with a, a hobby knife when you're done all right and it is a beautiful model uh, assembly wise uh, what are, what are gonna be our order of operations do we, we want to also paint this? Yes. So, so I, Frank, I think painting is going to be the next step, but yeah, there's a certain order you need to go in. With awesome. So when we brought this kit to you, Frank, and we said, okay, this is kind of how we want it to end up looking on, mm -hmm. the, on the computer monitor. This, this finished model um, has all this interior pieces. Uh, what were your thoughts? Um, I think that the inside parts needed to be painted before the outside because they have this metallic look. They're like gold and silver and stuff like that. So... Um, to prep all that, I, I kind of painted my in, interiors already. Um, and then the outside, uh, kind of like when we built the, the armor, 
when we did the the Nerf gun mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Um, when we painted that, I used toothpaste on that, so I would I would spray it the metallic color first, and then put some toothpaste down where I wanted it to kind of chip up and be weathered, and then I would <laughs> paint the other color on top of it. So. Um, Forgot to bring toothpaste, but we found some burn gel in the first aid cabinet. Yeah. Work. So <laughs> I tested that out, and uh, and, it, and it seems to work okay. So I think we'll do that. We'll we'll paint all of this stuff the the metal color. I mean, the, these are already gray, so that kind of works yeah. in a metallic undertone. And you can just do a little bit of this, uh, these like uh, like spotting and stuff. And then I, we'll... I never would have thought of using toothpaste. That's, yeah. That's, oh, and, it burn looks, gel. and it looks great. Yeah. Um, they have a water soluble like. Yeah. Out of your pace. Yeah, it, it needs to be water soluble. I don't want to use like something like Vaseline or hand cream because that's got like oils in it, which might mm. prevent paint from sticking later. Okay. Um, this stuff's pretty much most mostly water. Um, same thing with toothpaste. It's it's mostly water. Um, it washes off really easily. And then we'll just hit it with some spray paint. And maybe weather some up with a little bit of brown. Throw throw on those other reds and yellows with the airbrush or hand brush them. Right, so like in terms of painting it, we have a lot of options for tools, right? Mm -hmm. We've worked on, with the airbrush before yep. here. We've done, you know, uh, kits with that, resin kits. Uh, we've done a, only a little bit of hand brushing, not a ton of hand brushing, and we haven't done coats with spray paint. Um, but you're thinking like cover the wide swaths with spray paint first? D yeah, do the, do the metallics, do the internals, assemble all of the stuff. Mm -hmm. And then we'll do the outside after that. And that can be all the detail stuff, which includes <clears throat> your masking, yeah. includes the hand, hand, um, the hand painting stuff, yep. and also the airbrushing. Yeah, it's uh, not real easy to like, if you assembled this thing to spray all those silvers yeah. and golds in there without having to mask a ton. So it's, it's better to just do all the parts right now, and then we'll put it together. Now here we, we've just used like off the shelf hardware store uh, silver and gold spray paint. Do you mm -hmm. have like, do you have like a, a favorite metallic paint that you go to like when you really need it to look sharp? You know, there, there's this really good uh, brand called um, Allclad, uh -huh. and that stuff's great. A lot of times when I do, all, if I want something to look metallic, I'll spray paint it black first, gloss black, mm -hmm. and then you spray uh, the Allclad chrome or silver on top of that, and then you just take a piece of um, steel wool and lightly scuff it. So, oh, it's, so it gets the kind it gives of the, those like oh, that brushed metal look. That's amazing. Um, that's like a real easy way to do it, and I think that those those paints are really great. Now, so, with some of those paints, I know it's almost like a system where you gotta like you put this layer on and then you put this layer on. Is it pretty much you could just do gloss the black, black and, and, then, and it works? But you could do that with this stuff too. You could put gloss black down first mm -hmm. and then hit it with this stuff and scrape away the the outside mm -hmm. gold. I don't think that it needs it with this. I think, no, I think I, I, yeah. I think that this off the shelf stuff is plenty good. Yeah. But I mean, if you really want to step up, your, there's tons of tons of specialty paints you can use. You know, the, the past paint projects we did on the resin kits, the sculpted stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, we did washes on, yeah. on that stuff because the <clears throat> details that were sculpted in or that were cast, the, it made sense to to do washes to wipe away to get the paint to seep through all mm -hmm. the seams. Um, for something that's 3D printed, uh, where you have pr you know print lines, yeah. what's going to show and what's not going to well, show? I'd be a little worried about doing the typical like brown washes that we do, like wiping this whole thing down with brown, because then we're going to really highlight all of these lines. I think that doing little fine brushing and then maybe wiping some of that might be a little bit better. Mm. Like like do some oxidizing around the screws or something like that. Um, and I think I'm going to end up airbrushing a lot of this stuff to kind of give it. A little bit of a weather. Yeah, look. Frank. Frank touches on a really good point with a lot of the the 3D printing uh, with the the layers. Even when they're really really fine like that, you get this kind of capillary action where mm -hmm. you'll put some paint somewhere and it's like, zoop, and it sucks it to everywhere you don't want it to go. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. We try. I've I've had we uh, my friend and I were making some uh, boxes for like game cards and game dice, and I did this really nice inlaid print of the name of the game. And our idea was to then dribble uh, paint down into it to kind of fill in the, the text. And that worked in theory, but what will happen is it's still a little porous between all those print lines sometimes, and it started sucking it into the interior portions of the box, and it became a mess. But yeah, <laughs> so you got to be careful of the capillary action. Now, yeah. to, to counteract that, you know, you could, if you want to sand or smooth this out, uh, you also talk about Bondo, mm -hmm. so we're not going to do that today, but it's something that we can do. You buy Bondo, you know, you get it 
smeared and, on. And this is just something that I picked that sounded good. I, I'm sure Frank would have some good ideas too for this, but this has worked surprisingly well because it's meant for like light scratches or minor pitting, which is pretty much what this is. So it goes on really smooth and easy and it dries like in 15, 20 minutes and you can sand it immediately. So mm -hmm. yeah. I, I've used um, uh, filler primers before. Yeah. Uh, like just regular rattle can filler primers are good, but the stuff that I really love are catalyzed filler primers. You can get, um, there's a, a polyester version called uh, Polyprime, mm -hmm. um, which it stinks like polyester. But then it, there's also these rattle cans that have a little thing in the bottom where you push it in and it releases the catalyst into the can. And, and what then, does that do for you and then? then? But then you have a catalyzed can of paint that you, you can use, I think it's about four days you can use it. Uh -huh. And then when you spray it, it's catalyzed paint, so it sets up, and it sets up really hard and really, and you could like really drench it on because it's catalyzed. That's cool. Um, uh -huh. And I got it at uh, Coast Airbrush. They, they have that stuff there. I have to check that um, out. You, yeah, go online, check out Coast Airbrush, and there's, there's a whole line of it. They have clears and matte clears and filler, and like the filler primers and mm -hmm. an epoxy primer. Um, like all kinds of really great catalyzed paints. It sounds and the like it would be really good for this. Spraying that on, you can sand that, and yeah. it works as a filler, and that doesn't take away t a lot of the detail. Like, you want to, if you're talking about really yeah. small detail, like, you know, smooth on sells the XCC 3D, and a lot of people build big 3D print, 3D print armor, mm -hmm. you know, helmets and stuff, can use that and paint that on and sand that, but you lose a lot of the edge detail. Yeah, and that is the that is a problem. Like, if you're doing something, some smaller stuff like this, if you do like the, or there's like the, if you're doing a, a, a B, actually you can do it with PLA too, but when you do the, the uh, vapor smoothing, uh, where you you like for ABS parts, you put in a little vat of ABS fumes, heat, heat ABS, acetone yeah. fumes, and it kind of just like melts the outside. And it it can give some nice results, but it makes it kind of it loses definition, it loses right? sharpness. Yeah, yeah. So I think like something like the catalyzed primer, which would go on thinner, thin. but but still thick enough to hide the lines, would yeah. be a really good. Yeah, catalyzed primer. I have to try that out. Yeah, that's my jam. Cool. Awesome. Uh, well, let's take a look at what you have, Frank. Here, you did some pre-spray painting. Yeah. Uh, we're going to start on that on our end. So I'm going to show people, uh, for I think example, there's a, don't we we have got, a, yeah, maybe we have a do we have this one for, going? For look now. I'm going to show people. Oh, ah, there we go. Ah, there we go. Here we go. So, yeah. so uh, basically, I, I took the golds and I sprayed all the golds first. Um, and on some of these parts, there's <clears> silvers <throat> also. I didn't bother masking any of this stuff. I just I sprayed all the golds, flipped it over, sprayed all the silvers. Um, so it's, it's super easy, probably took me, what, 10, 15 minutes, mm -hmm. even including dry time to, to spray all these parts. Um, and then on this one, I did the gold, and then I did the silver on the outside, and then this is where I use that, uh, the burn gel or toothpaste or whatever. Mm -hmm. I would use toothpaste, it, yeah. it doesn't <laughs> stink like this, and it's easier to find. Um, and then I just did this really quick just to test to make sure that it works, but uh, you know, I'll take my time on the rest of this thing and, and really, play with where where the paint would have chipped off and how it would have yeah. chipped off. I like the flat color, the flat green too. That yeah. looks nice. And then it, it you know it just looks like the you know the paint's chipped off and there's that metallic underneath coming off. So nice. And then for assembly of a lot of the kits, I know a lot of stuff that Jackie does, you know, are snap kits. Mm -hmm. and, and we've seen a lot of great snap kits, 3D printed snap kits. Uh, this one we're gonna use glue and it's just gonna be super glue. Super yeah. glue. Super yeah, glue. I, no easy problem. stuff. You know I find S super glue is typically what I've used for uh, all my ABS prints because for a long time I was doing things in ABS because I like the the give to the the material stuff. I found PLA is a little more challenging to glue with super glue. Uh, go, go, it just doesn't set up as good. I don't know what it is exactly, but uh, you, just, you want to use it sparingly. I find mm. um, just as a, as a good tip. So don't like don't really glob it on there. All right, but well, it will also be painting it, so that'll make a difference. Exactly. Too. Yeah. Yeah, and we want this, I think, the great thing about Jackie's design is that it's supposed to look old and rusted and doesn't uh, need to be perfectly I smooth. I love building weathered stuff, yes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, building new stuff is not fun. <laughs> yeah, you got, it's, if you screw up, then you're like. <sighs> well, then you turn it to weathered. <laughs> right. Then there, oh, what? Yeah. It's, it's not a newly issued nuke. It's you know it's it's something that's lost. Yeah. Now the, the, the these have been out. rattling around the wasteland for uh, you know a hun few hundred years, so they can be beat up. Cool. Uh, well, I hope you guys 
enjoyed and learned a little bit about the 3D printing process and how you can 3D print your own kits that you can download and hopefully get to something like Jackie's beautiful Fallout Mini Nuke. That's what we're gonna try to do the rest of the week in this series. Sean and I, are during this next break, are gonna paint up, uh, spray paint our interiors, mm -hmm. and then the next episode we're gonna get to actually painting the interiors and assembling and give to Frank, give you the time you need to make your nuke beautiful and hopefully we can learn that as well. Uh, if you want to follow along, go to tested.com uh, slash membership and sign up for a Tested Premium member subscription. Um, there's also tons of other premium videos with Adam. We're doing a lot of projects. We're even building the Martian suit. Yep. The space suit from the Martian. A lot of work. Uh, a lot of work on that. <laughs> so a lot of, and of course, we'll have a ton of stuff on YouTube as well. Uh, but thank you guys for watching and thank you Tested Premium members for supporting us. Frank, Sean, and I We'll be back tomorrow on Tested.com. Until then, bye.